This is Tania Rasti. She's um, she's from the University of Navarre. She specializes in gynecology by the same university. She has an extensive amount of training in endocrinology and reproduction and uh, applied echography. She's an expert in the Creighton method. She was trained at the Omaha University in USA. She's got many papers covering this issue and also echography. Right, so yours is the floor. Thank you very much and good afternoon, everybody. Well, here's the here's the title. This is the Creighton model seen from the point of view of uh, NAPRO technology. Lots of things have been mentioned about NAPRO technology and how this forms part of uh, this uh, restorative uh, medicine. And Nap NAPRO technology is part of it. This is a diagnostic uh, method uh, for fertility awareness, which is what I'm going to be explaining here. Dr. Boyle this afternoon has already mentioned this, and that is NEPRO technology is a scientific approach to analyze the reproductive health of women, and what it does is monitor and evaluate according to the fertility register, and in particular according to Creighton, any causes, any underlying causes in sterility. and. It cooperates with the cycle and also mm, tries to identify the pathology. It respects the human dignity of the parents and the newborn, and it also has a philosophical and theological vision of the Catholic Church, which reminds us of Humana Vitae. And here we have some publications on the efficacy of this uh, of NAPRO technology, but we also have other um, models of restorative reproductive medicine. This paper was published that very year. And don't be surprised by these publications because this one from an Italian group, I think it didn't really understand the ideology that's involved in this process or the philosophy, if you want, the underlying philosophy in the natural regulation of fertility. Because it talks about efficacy and it talks about the benefits that NAPRO technology contributes towards the treatment of uh, fertility. So I think that they don't really understand this properly because. Uh, they say that it's a preferable, preferable not to resort to this technique, but in any case, they do study the benefits, and if you want, you can consult that. Dr. Boyle has also spoken about some of these papers that um, oh, he already mentioned. But what is a Creighton system, the Creighton model system? It's a diagnostic system that has to do with the um, fertility awareness, and it's the standardization of the bidding system that has just been explained. It has medical applications and also surgical applications. And this is a tool for uh, family planning, and this is going to allow us to prevent pregnancies or to um, become pregnant. And the benefits that NAPRO technology has, or sorry, Creighton has, compared to other systems is um, its standardization. The Billings a couple uh, developed their method, and since then, different groups have tried to standardize it in such a manner that both the teaching as well as the learning and the register of observations is uh, something that is totally can be extrapolated to different patients and different kind of mucus. And this is what uh, I think poses its benefits. There's also uh, totally customized uh, teaching. The practitioner is the person that helps the couple to recognize their fertility over time and then will explain how. And the most significant thing has to do with how this uh, practitioner is trained at the same time so that he can become an instructor. There's a supervisor that um, does monitor this person and, well, he first has to make sure that his uh, teaching methodology is perfect and until that happens, he doesn't leave him or her unsupervised. So there's also coaching and there's, well, proximity closing and, uh, well, here we have the case management, which is a system for problem solving. For instance, we have when a patient observes uh, lots of lubrication of the cycle and can't uh, differentiate uh, those moments when her fertility does exist or otherwise. Or we also have, um, I don't know, sexuality problems in a married couple, which is when well, these cases can be submitted to um, Creighton um, specialist 
And then, and then, well, something else has been mentioned here, and it was also mentioned yesterday by the group from Chile. There's SPICE, the SPICE index, and what we want to do is assess and help couples. We advise them all the way throughout the project. The SPICE means spiritual, physical, intellectual, creative, communicative, and emotional, psychological. And Well, this is the spark that can be added on to that uh, marital relationship. And now I would like to talk about the Binnings method in uh, the case of couples and their training. Well, to standardize the teaching process, well, first what we do is an introductory session, which is uh, about one and a half hours long. We explain physiology, both masculine and feminine, and uh, how the observations have to be made and we talk about cervical discharge. We use a picture dictionary that I'm going to show you later on. And uh, the, we have follow-up sessions, which are these. Well, these are the sessions in such a manner that when a couple has been um, here for two weeks after the introductory introduction sessions, there have been already four follow-up interviews. So. If the cycles are more or less regular, well, there have been two, and they now have learned how to recognize their fertility pretty well. And this, these are well, these are pictures in the picture dictionary. Well, there's a description here based on the pictures, and you can see the characteristics of the mucus that the patient is going to observe on the toilet paper. It's important to perform mucus observation, and also, well, the feelings she has when she uh, wipes her vulva with the toilet paper. Next slide, please. Here are the images. This is in the introductory session for the marriage of the couples. These are registries or charts of fertility in which the couples are taught how to register and how to have what the, the aspect of the registry, registry card after the study of the mucus. The registry of this chart, as we have just said, in Billings as well. I can't make the slide go forward. Yes, now. <clears throat> the menstruation days in red, the dry days in green, and the mucus days in white where with the little child there. This is very similar to the meth Billings method. Standardization allows for the universalization of the observations, the reliability, the precision, transfer of knowledge, and also research. Dr. Stanford this afternoon mentioned the importance that these observations are specific and precise in order to have the adequate observation in the natural methods with respect to their efficacy. And here we have this vagina discharge recording system from Dr. Maria Elena, uh, me mentioned saying how complicated it, is, it was in the Creighton method because these are the sentence, the letters that can, acronyms that can complicate for things even more. Recognition of what's the type of menstruation, then we have the feeling at what is observed uh, in the vulva, what they have in the toilet paper, a description of the mucus is here in yellow, and if there is lubrication as well. And this is the first page of the follow-up form where they register all the follow-up interviews uh, with that couple. This is a Creighton chart quite similar to those ones that the different uh, speakers have been showing to us. Uh, red days, uh, wet, then uh, fertile days in white, dry days in green, 
these tilted cards are corrections from the practitioner and user that uh, who is start learning, starting to learn, learn the method. In this case can also be because with these uh, yellow cards, the days where there are mucus, are we can register the fertile and the non-fertile days. And then the observations and how often per day did they have that observation of the most fertile in the day, if they have had set relations or not. Well, how is this NAPRO technology studied from the perspective of NAPRO technology? Fertile mucus, NAPRO, the progesterone, uh, it becomes uh, sticky and the patient has the feeling of dryness. This is an abnormal chart that has an erratic mucus uh, volume in this premenstrual bleeding. We're in progesterone in Creighton. What we're going to do with these observations of Creighton, we are going to study, we are going to apply NAPRO technology. There are three phases in NAPRO technology. Dr. Boyle has mentioned this this afternoon. Uh, the first phase of NAPRO is researching the problems. We're going to study this Creighton graft and program the explorations to have a specific accurate diagnosis. This phase will last for two or three months. And in the second phase, that also lasts two or three months, we are going to implement the treatment in a cooperative t t moment, t form with the cycle. And this chart becomes then normal. The markers have been corrected. And finally, we are going to have one year of count back. Dr. Boyle has mentioned it. Once that a person ovulates properly, we give one year of time. And these publications that I presented before, we have the results of an increase in the rate of pregnancies, and the year can then be prolonged to two years. If there is a chronic pathology, the treatment has to be chronic. Uh, there's a way of improving the health status of the patient and her fertility. Logically, he will be, she will have more possibilities for pregnancy. In the chart, we're going to identify the biomarkers. We are going to program the hormonal study. We're going to program the follow-up uh, ultrasounds. We have also been mentioned about the help of ultrasound to diagnose fertility. It is very important in the NAPRO technology as well. There are ovulation, in, incorrect uh, ovulation diagnosis in NAPRO technology. And according to the biomarkers, we will have to do other studies, diagnostic laparoscopies, diagnostic hysteroscopies, and hormone analysis in general as well. Not only sexual, sex hormones, but a general blood test. We see this chart. Well, it is quite clear that this is a normal chart. And then a premenstrual bleeding. The luteal phase, there we have the biomarkers that we will have to study. We will see the status of the mucus, vaginal discharge, ovulatory pathology, ectropion, the amount of mucus, mucus score, they have described a mucus score. The amount of mucus that will be assessed is quite rel complex. Let's see if the amount of mucus produced is sufficient or not. So for her to get pregnant, we will have to guide us the treatments towards that. Stability of the cycles, the post-ovulation phases mainly, and then the bleeding. She had those spotting. If there are problems with the luteal body, uh, endometriosis, here we have the biomarkers. There is a, here is a patient with a quite a bit of quite a important stability. And mucus in some places, we will have to rule out that she doesn't have any cervical pathology. And in problem searching, it's important to see the amount of medication that is 
the, the amount of tests that are being done. If we see the progesterone amount in the luteal phase, we will have in the peak plus seven, we have insufficiency of the luteal body or the early luteal body insufficiency where they're not pre prepared to host an embryo. Here we have the chart that you can see this type of insufficiency of the luteal body for progesterone and estradiol. In Creighton, there has described five types of luteal phase defects and also defect of pre-peak phase, pre-ovulatory phase, so that the hormone assessments that we will do according to the hormonal cycle on day five, day five minus five, Estradiol plus six plus four, I think you said, is speaking very fast. And the estradiol progesterone peak plus three, seven, nine, so that we will cover the whole phase. We can study this ovulatory, ovulatory pathology. In this slide, we have a patient who don't, doesn't have mucus. She doesn't get pregnant. This other one patient has a luteal phase that is very short. When the umbra reaches the cavity, there is a micro-abortion. Practically, they don't realize about it. Another one is practically probably low in progesterone. And this one has an abnormal bleeding, organic pathology. And these are the different causes of sterility that have been identified with NAPRO technology, apart from the others that Dr. Boyle has already mentioned. What is important? In the ultrasound diagnosis, the immature follicle, partial follicular rupture, the LUF, late follicular rupture, hormone pathologies, and other pathologies that we can find in gynecology. According to the phase, problem correction. What is the problem of the patient? We are going to correct it. We are going to see uh, the induction of the ovulation, clomiphene, letrozole, etc. We are going to have uh, uh, support of H HCG pre-peak and HCG. Please come to an end, doctor, and please speak slightly slowly, but it's difficult to tell her. We guarantee the graph is no chart is normal. We still have the count path from six to 12 months. And now in Apple technology as well, we can, if we don't have any pregnancy, we can do it one more year. And we have the organic, treat organic disease, hormone problems, treat cycle by cycle hormone. And thank you, that was all. Thank you very much. I'm very sorry she was speaking really very fast and not to the microphone either, so it was quite hard.